I was very pleased to see so many of you enjoyed yesterday's chainsaw video. I hope today's video will live up um, to those expectations. I think it's going to. So in the past, back in the day, uh, a few years ago, I built um, the Paul Sellers Carpenter's Bench. It was a long series. Uh, it's the bench here to my right. You've all seen it. Wonderful bench. I wouldn't change a thing about it. But I got a lot of emails over the years about folks that said, you know what, I, I really need something like that. I really need a, a proper workbench, something that I can be, a, be proud of, but I, I'm not willing to take, I, I don't have room for something like that. Maybe I just have a small half of the garage, it's my shop, or I'm renting something and I want something that I, is really sturdy, that I can work in, that I can do projects in, that I can take with me. Man, today is going to be that day. I've got something uh, that is going to be um, doable for everyone, regardless of your skill levels. And the good thing about it is it's only going to use standard mater framing material, two by sixes and two by fours. And it's gonna look really nice. It'll be something that when you're done building it, you can bring your wife out and you'll be really proud of it. It's really cool. So I'll be putting the material list for a six and a half foot version of it in the subject heading. I'm gonna build a 10. If you wanna do that, you can do it. You can build it any length you want to, but I think for most people, a six and a half foot bench is an ideal size. You, two people can work on it, more of that to come. So I wasn't gonna show any of the prep work um, in the video, and then I, as I was out in the, the other shop cutting stuff down, I thought, no, I think this is important. We'll share all this together. Ooh, we're gonna go bright. Gonna go bright. Uh, there we go. Snowing again. Got a little trace of snow on the truck here from last night. So this is the lumber package here for a 10 foot bench. That's gonna be quite a bit bigger than the one that I'm gonna put in there. So what it came down to is 10 foot two by sixes. There's 15 of them, uh, one two by 12, eight foot, and a couple two by fours. I did buy a couple extra of each board, you know, just in case you always need them around the house. But what I'm doing now is I'm ripping off all of the bull noses on the standard framing material. So in America, our two by sixes are actually inch and a half by five and a half. The two by six, where that comes from, the original rough cut is two by six from the sawmill. And then after it goes to the shaper and the planer, it comes down to, it's, it's, they take an inch and a half off of it. We're taking that even further. So one thing that looks bad on framing material, which is, this is just inexpensive Doug fir, but it's been hand selected by me. I went through the whole pile, picked out really nice stuff. Was really lucky I got stuff that was kiln dried as well as um, very f almost free of knot. I, mean, I, I was just so happy I'd, I have not seen framing material in such good condition. So what I'm doing is we're ripping all these down to five inches. They're five and a half, right? So I've taken a quarter off of each end. And the reason being is you can see that they put a bull nose on framing material. That bull nose is that rounded off edge, not a clean, sharp edge. We don't want that. That's what makes it look like framing material. If we just simply put some nice clean edges on there, it looks different. So we're ripping this down to five inches. All right, so we've got all of those two by sixes ripped to five and a quarter. Now we're gonna reset our saw, flip them over to the other side, and we ultimately want to end up with a five inch. Now some of these we're gonna rip again um, uh, uh, on the little table saw, but I wanna, I'll just do all the heavy work out here, uh, make all the mess and and this saw is more powerful, it's a 240 volt, so it 
The other one will cut it, but this one cuts it faster. All right, so let me really double check there, make sure. I don't like these Milwaukee tapes. I bought these, Mil I've always used Stanley tapes, the Power Locks and the Fat Max and all that. And these, the only reason I bought one of these is because it was two for one at Home Depot. It was on sale and I, and I needed a new tape, but I tried it out and I, I don't like it. Don't like, uh, the edges are sharp. They cut my fingers when it comes in. I think having a magnet on the end is completely stupid unless you're a, unless you're a steel, unless you're staming, framing steel stud, which I'm not. It sticks to things, you pull it out of your nail belt, it's always got a screw stuck on it. And then also it's starting to fail. This is, this is after using only, I, won't, I started using it on the shop right here. See that right there? Right there, I don't know what's causing that, but it's all separating, coming apart. Not recommended. Definitely not recommended. And it doesn't, it doesn't seem, it doesn't have, you know, this, it, it's not strong, it's not as strong. I mean, yeah, you can run it out, but when there's any sort of a little twist on it, it seems to want to, like, buckle over. It's, it's not as good. It is not as good as a Stanley. I've got a beef with Home Depot and the lumber mill that mills this material. This is supposed to be a 2x12. This is what I expect out for my lower shelf. This is what I need. This is what the plans all call for. Here, what do we got? We got 11 and an 8. Now, I'm fine with 11 and a half. A 2 by 12, of course, is supposed to be 1 and a half by 11 and a half. That's fine. I understand that. I just understand that the rough cut's 12, and it goes down to a half inch for the planing and the joining and all that stuff. But when they further cut corners, this is taking advantage of the consumer here. I think that they are opening themselves up to a class action lawsuit because this is not what I paid for. I am missing, how many, how much wood am I missing? I'm missing three-eighths of wood. That just will not stand, Home Depot. So here's the package broke up into its three respective piles. This here is going to be the tabletop right there. Eight two-by-sixes and then two ripped at two and a half right there. So that's also one, but I cut it into two. Regardless of whatever uh, length you're going to get, that's what you're going to have. Our bench is going to come out to 25 inches of depth, which is pretty good if you want to reach back and grab tools. Any more than that, and it gets kind of, you know, it's kind of hard to get to the back of it. I decided to go with 25. Here is the framing for the, the bench itself. The two by fours I'm not going to need. I those are for another project and then of course the shelf right there so I only ripped both sides on these guys here um, these here I ripped on one side because these are going to be ripped again to various lengths I just got the majority of the work out of the way so let's go get everything uh, stickered up we are ready to get started so I'm going to change the blade to a more of a finished blade a fine cutting blade so that on our edges that they're clean and we have less tear out um, because everything is going to be kind of finished. So uh, the difference is, if you don't know, there is the amount of teeth. So you can see that these are 12 inch blades and this one has a 60 on it. So that's a 62, 60 tooth total. And then this is a, a finished blade here. And this is a, a, a 78 teeth, 78 tooth. So the more teeth, the finer the cut, the more clean and crisp it is. However, the slower it is as well. Um, and, and it takes more power uh, to run. It takes more power to run these teeth. So if you're just doing rough framing and you're chopping and doing things, the lower tooth counts better. But if you want to do fine work, um, a high count is better. I think I even have a tape, like table saw finish blade. I think I got a Minitabo. Is, a, is it Minitabo? Or is that the dial indicator? I can't, I can't remember. It's like a 90. But this will be really good for today. Yes, the batteries are not snapped in. So before we get started, let's do a quick recap on what's been happening so far in the homestead shop and then a, a quick kind of synopsis of what we're going to do. So I've got my uh, material here, all the sides ripped off, ready to go into two piles. Uh, this will be the table top right here and the shelf, and this will be all of the, the frame itself. So the table top is going to be a full three inches thick. It's a pretty, pr it'll be a really nice durable shop. Um, I put, I got, went to work a little bit more cleaning there and just kind of messing around and, 
and uh, you know designing different cleats and you know trying different things there and and uh, th that's something you just kind of have to start working in here and see what you need. It's hard to anticipate. And then to get built a few more shelves over here and kind of working with the charging stations and and all of that fun stuff. Uh, of course, we got the workbench over here, and then this is where we're going to be working. This is going to be the heart of the project. We're going to have a 10-foot bench across here. And I've been wondering about the height, and I think what I'm going to do, so there's two tip typical heights. You know, you're going to have your desktop height, which is your know, regular, like a table, dining room table. And then you're going to have your bar height, your 36 inches or so. And since this is my workshop, and I work in here, and I'm about four inches higher, taller than the average person, I like 40 inches. So that's what I built my workbench here, is at 40 inches. It works perfectly for me. I don't have to stoop so much. All right, so think long and hard about the height of your workbench, especially if it's gonna be something that you're gonna be spending 20, 30 years at. Here's my, my rationale. I, I, if we go to with the low height, let's say we go to the dining room height, you know, you're 24 inches or whatever it is, 26 inches like that. That is nice because you can sit in a normal chair. You can get a normal chair, like an office chair. Um, it's very comfortable. You can spread your feet out. We all know that, right? The second option is bar stool height, 36 inches to 40 inches or so, depending on your height. And just a simple bar stool like this. What I like about the bar stool height is this, is that to get up out of a seated position, if you're going back and forth for tools a lot, it's a it's quite a bit of effort. It's a you got to push out and you know grab something and get up. Where the bar stool position uh, for me is a kind of an inner in between. It's not sitting and it's not standing. It's it's kind of right in between, but it's very quick. I can go over here. I can sit down, rest a little bit. I can work. I can go here. I'm already up. It's, it's I'm almost to my feet. I like that better. Um, it, it just seems to work better better for the way I type of work where I'm pretty active and moving around. The other thing we really want to consider is if you have uh, multiple bar stools in your shop, let's say you and your kids are going to be working in there, these take up a lot of space and you can constantly moving them in a small shop so you want them to have a home. That's the other reason why I like the bar stool height is that once we have the shelf up here, you know, we'll design all this, the bar stools will fit underneath. Let me show you, give you a perfect example. So here's a perfect example. This was important to me to have a bar stool that fit underneath of the bench. That way I'm not trying to get it out of the way. I mean, if, we're, if we decide on a, 20, a, a short, like a table height, 24, most of the chairs that we're gonna have are gonna have backs on them, you know, like an office chair. They're gonna push up against the workbench, but they're not gonna go under the workbench and they're gonna be constantly in your way. You just can't work over a chair like that and then you're constantly moving them around. We want to avoid that. We don't want that. So for me, the bar stool height that can be they can be nested in underneath or hide underneath is a is a the better option. I'm sorry guys, I want to get started as badly as you do, but there's so many things we need to discuss. On your lumber, if you see, I've got my lumber brought in here and I've got it stickered, meaning I've got three quarter inch piece of strips of scrap plywood in there to get air circulation around it. Now in a perfect world, this would have brought in here, been brought in here and heated and sat for about a week or two weeks would even be better to climatize and to dry out. Yes, it's kiln dried from Home Depot, but it's still got a fair amount of moisture in it. But I'm an impatient person and I don't plan very well. And so I, I'm gonna build with it. So I'm just gonna glue it and clamp it into submission. But if you are thinking about building one of these, Remember, the material list will be in the subject heading. It'll be everything there for a six and a half foot table. If you want to go more, you know, you'll have to add material, but get your material now, get it inside the heated space and get it drying and warming and make sure you sticker it like this. Oh, a lot of work. Boy, I thought I was going to be building a lot more today. I, half the day was taken up with just the preparation prep time on that, but next part we will certainly get started. I know that because I've already done it. I'm a day ahead of you guys. So interesting. So the amazing chainsaw video, a lot of them looking at the numbers right here, 6,402 thumbs down, 3,804 thumbs up. Most of you got it for what it was. A lot of people were offended. A lot more people were offended about it um, than I thought. The thing that was, you know, I guess the kind of thing that I was trying to point out with it, and I'm, I'm not going to apologize for it. Um, I thought it was funny. And I think that anyone with a well, I think most people realize that, but uh, what it, what I wanted to kind of point out, what maybe you don't see on my end, um, 
is the um, entitlement attitude. It's a really hard thing for me to to take, but we all suffer from it. You know, I'm not not sitting here uh, um, saying that I'm exempt from that. I'm certainly entitled too. I catch myself all the time. Sometimes at a restaurant, order some food and something's just not the way you want it, you know, and you know how that is and you complain about it and lose sight of the big picture, and the, which is, wow, how blessed I am I to be able to come and to have this wonderful meal uh, for my, for my family, uh, with my family, um, have someone else clean up and do the cooking and all of that. That's sometimes the way we ought to look at things. And the reason why I did the video is I want to point out that entitlement. You, you know, one thing, uh, one that stuck out, I don't want to pick on anyone. There was a lot of, a lot of similar comments to this, uh, is that, um, I, I'm going to summarize here. I'm going to change the names and subject a little bit. So no one's embarrassed, but, um, I had a really crummy day at work, work today. Um, and uh, I came home and saw that you had uploaded a video, and I, I was, that was my time to unwind, and I got this, uh, you suck. Um, I get that. No, I, under, I understand that, but keep, let's keep perspective here is that, it, that um, you, you are not entitled to um, be entertained by me. You're not entitled to a video uh, every single day. And, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I, maybe I'm going to regret even talking about this, but I, I just don't, I don't think it's fair. I, I worked, work really hard. Uh, you guys work really hard. I'm not complaining about it. I feel I have the best job in the world being able to be a YouTube creator, but, um, the, the sense of entitlement that, uh, if I don't do something a certain way, or if I don't upload the video that you want to see, then you bring hate and threaten and tell me you're going to unsubscribe or worse. Um, I, I I don't think that's the way it ought, it ought to be. I, let's look at it uh, that um, every day is a blessing. Every video is a blessing because tomorrow there's no video promised to anyone. Tomorrow's not promised to anyone. I might not even make it home and there may, you know, may not be a channel anymore or, or, or you or who knows. But um that's why it was not a uh, an insult to subscribers. I am a pr more appreciative than you could possibly know to everyone that supported the channel. But uh, it's just sometimes you got to point out the obvious. And um, well, that's enough on that. So we'll see you guys on the next video.